But if you look under the hood, I don't think they're strong at all. And I think what Wall Street might be missing is, and this is old news, but they might be. Hello everyone, Adrian Day, president of Adrian Day Asset Management, discusses the becoming suffering phase for most people as interest rates stay higher for longer. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Inflation may stay high for all those forces that he listed, and, and the result of that is higher rates for longer. Do you agree? Yeah, I, I generally agree. I mean, I certainly think inflation is going to be a lot more stubborn than a lot of people are, are imagining. And, you know, there's obviously deflationary forces, but there's also inflationary forces. So, you know, it's a, it's a question of um, weighing uh, the inflationary forces against the deflationary. But yeah, I suspect we're going to have a much more stubborn inflation than mo uh, most people are thinking. Higher for longer is, is a more problematic thing because it comes into, I mean, certainly higher, certainly we've been higher for longer. There's no question about that so far, you know, because you, you only have to go back to last December and look at the dot plot and look at Jerome Powell's comments at the press conference after the Fed meeting in December and look at what the Fed funds futures rates done uh, did back in December. So we've already been a lot higher than longer than the people expected. But from where we are now, you know, the problem is there's economic questions, but there's also fiscal questions. And, um, you know, the big question for me, as for many people, is the federal government deficit. You know, you you simply can't keep rates too high for too long uh, without it completely blowing out the the deficit already, uh, the interest on the federal debt already, which is going up every single day this year. But already the interest rate on on the, on the debt is more than Medicaid. It's more than defense. Um, it's more than Medicare. Um, you know, you can't have a budget where 100% of your budget goes towards just servicing your debt. So I think at some point they're going to have to ease that. Jamie Dimon uh, referenced the fact that the economy may slow down, where at least the growth will be slower as a result of the higher deficit that you talked about and higher rates for longer. But will it actually, Adrian, think about it. Rates have been higher for longer in the past Right. We've had steady 5%, 6% uh, Fed funds rate in the past. And, you know, there was economic growth then. Why can't we have 5% or 4% even and still have growth? Right. Are you talking about the last couple of years or are you talking about previous periods in history? Just previous periods in history, yes. Yeah, yeah. I think the huge difference today is the debt. You know, when you've got large amounts of debt at the federal government level, the corporate level, and corporate balance sheets are strong, don't get me wrong, but there's, if you look at corporate debt, just debt, there's a lot of debt out there, and then household debt, of course. So all of the, the debt in the economy is so much more, but so much higher than it was in previous periods, say the 70s, when we had high interest rates. And... So as 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 we keep interest rates high for longer, then more and more people, more and more households, more and more corporations and the governments start to run into difficulty. I mean, just to put it in, in sort of human terms, the person that bought a secondhand car eight years ago when interest rates were lower, zero lower bound here, and maybe paid, I don't know what you pay for a used car, but maybe he paid 4%. And his car is just about ready for the junk heap right now. The fact the rates have gone from zero to 5% is not affecting him at the moment. But when that car stops running and he has to buy a new car, and he's not paying 4% for his car, he's paying 8% or 10% for his car, then that household is significantly affected. And every week that goes by or every month that goes by with rates higher for longer, more and more people are seriously affected by the higher rates. And Adrian, there are signs that the economy has been slowing down in terms of growth. Last quarter's GDP came in lower than expected. The leading economic indicators, as you know, has been a contraction territory for quite some time. And yet no recession, no official slowdown. What's keeping the um, what's keeping things afloat? 
Yeah, what's keeping things afloat, in my view, is the fact that we had a 12 years, basically, since 2008, since the great financial crisis, and then even more so since the COVID in 2020, we've had excessive injections of liquidity into the system. We've had interest rates you know, go down to low, zero lower bound, as I mentioned, before, before rising again, but we've also had these huge injections of money. And so that enabled households and corporations over the years, it enabled them to refinance their debt at lower rates. Everybody refinanced their mortgages, for example. It enabled corporations to term out their debt. So, so corporations, you see them every day, every corporation I follow. Uh, you know, some company is, is refinanced or was refinancing its debt. And so we entered this period of rates going up with certainly corporations and many households in a far better state than they would have been. But as I've mentioned to you before, if you look at the average length of time from the start of a rate hiking cycle until the onset of a recession, the average length of time is about 28 months. One of those is, a, is an anomaly of 50 months. So even if you take that out, you're still talking an average of 22 months. And we're only now at, you know, basically two years. So, but the average is 28 months. So we're only, we're not even at the average length of time from the onset of rate hikes to the onset of a recession. We're not even there yet. And with the easy money that we've had for so long, it should actually, it, it would be logical to expect that to take longer. Wall Street, though, has a slightly more optimistic view. This is from the Wall Street Journal that came in uh, a couple days ago, earlier this week. Investors crowd into soft landing trade ahead of crucial inflation data. This was before this week's CPI uh, release came out. Three straight months of hot inflation data dented Wall Street's confidence that a series of interest rate cuts is set to start any minute. Investors are hoping the fourth time is the charm. A mood of renewed optimism about a soft landing for the U.S. economy has swept across trading desks in the days ahead of Wednesday's release of the, CP, uh, of the CPI. Actually, Wednesday's release of the CPI, as you know, prompted a market rally, not a sell-off. So there's renewed optimism, and the sense of optimism hasn't, hasn't diminished so far. So what are people optimistic about exactly? Well, I think I think there's optimism, but there's also an awful lot of cash in the pockets of the one percent and the ten percent and the twenty percent, and it, it, you know, I mean, those people are optimistic. When I get money pouring into my gold fund, what do we buy? We buy gold stocks, um, and so that makes me optimistic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's a but but what I mean I understand is what you mean. Yes, yeah, yeah. Wealthy people have money and they're gonna put that money to work. Um so what are they optimistic about? I don't know. I think they're missing things. You know, I think if you look, as I say, the average length of a recession, you know, from the rate hacking cycle, we, we haven't even got to the average yet. But if you the headlines, the headlines of some of these things, GDP, employment, are quite strong. But if you look under the hood, I don't think they're strong at all. And I think what Wall Street might be missing is, and this is old news, but they might be really missing the fact that there are two economies in the US right now. The top 20%, the top 50% even, are doing reasonably well. And everyone in Wall Street is talking to people in that top 20% and they're all doing well. But the bottom 50% is doing very, very badly. So when you average it out, the aggregates don't look too bad, but half the population is really suffering. I mean, just look at employment, for example. You know, you see a little tick up in unemployment. What was it? One tenth of one percent or something. OK, but look at the um, uh, the labor participation rate, which inched up, but is still at basically a 40 year low. You look at the number of part time jobs. If you look at the number of full time, if you look at the number of full time private sector jobs, you, you see we're already at very high levels of unemployment. People are working two jobs because they have to. Um, and so I don't think the employment picture is as strong as the unemployment rate itself would lead us to believe. And we could, we could say the same about retail sales and everything else. Even if inflation stays sticky, Adrian? 
I, I think so, because the economy is just slowly, slowly getting worse, in my view. Um, and I mentioned unemployment, it ticked up a tenth of a percent. But, you know, the, these things, if it ticks up a tenth of a percent every month, that becomes meaningful. After Someone all. made this analogy. I don't know if you agree with this analogy. It's a frog. It's like a frog in water boiling slowly. It doesn't feel the temperature going up one degree at a time, but eventually the frog dies. It doesn't know why. Well, exactly. And of course, there's a famous quote from Hemingway, how do you go bankrupt slowly at first and then suddenly? And I think, you know, we're going to see that very much in the economy. As I say, you know, more and more people are getting into what I'll call the suffering phase. Uh, rates on credit card debt are now, I think the average is now 24%, 24.5%. And for poorer credits and some credit cards, it's even higher than that. So people who people who've been built who haven't been paying off their credit cards every single month, and that's not Jamie Diamond. I'm sure he pays off his credit card every month. People who haven't paid off their credit cards every month, they are suffering because when you're paying 30%, 29% interest rates on your credit card, it's very, very difficult to get ahead. By the way, I know somebody working at a bank. I'm not going to name which one, but he told me that uh, credit card rates are likely to go up, not down, because the interchange rate has gone down. So they need to make that up with higher rates going forward, even even if the Fed cuts rates. So, Well, um, sure, sure. And, yeah. and when Congress interferes and says, well, you can't charge people a, a late penalty fee and you can't do this and you can't you can't do airline awards and all that kind of stuff, as the new bill in Congress says... Um, that only means that they have to just raise their flat interest rate. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Adrian Day. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.